Hi everyone, this is Martha, and I'm so excited to be tangling with you all, my friends from near and far. Today we are working with Project Pack 7, our 12 days of Zentangle series. We have some lovely new gray tiles and some fine tools to be working with. Shall we get started? So in your pack, which if you've opened it by now, you will have found these beautiful gray tiles. And I'm going to choose one of the square ones to work with. I think this is a really fun new string that, um, that we've been playing around with. And we've given it a playful name, uh, kind of borrowing from the tangle ing and from the playfulness of a ding splat, if any of you are familiar with that. I'm going to be using this Micron PN in this sort of navy blue color. It's a really, really beautiful color, actually. And I'm going to start at the top, and borrowing from that zigzag way, I'm going to draw in pen the beginning of our tangle. And we're just going to enjoy looping back and forth. Until we get to the bottom. We're going to connect these loopy lines and create sort of a um, unpredictable grid, if you will. I'm going to start by taking off from this top loop and landing down here at this point. And my line will have a curve to it and you'll get into the rhythm. So I'm going to take off from the top of the loop, curve down and land on this intersection. It's a, a backwards S shape. Again, I'll do it here. Take off from the loop and land here. Take off from the loop and land here. So you'll see because we all have different uh, ways that our loops are coming back and forth that these shapes will not be symmetrical or the same. And that's actually the whole point. <laughs> So on this side, we're going to do the same thing but the opposite. And I'm going to start on this first loop and then we'll go back and do the top. And for doing it on the left side, it's going to be an actual S shape. So I'm going to take off on the loop and land here. Take off on the loop and land. And this one will just land at the point. And we'll just mimic that shape here. There. Now I'm going to turn the tile completely upside down and just connect it at the top. And this is much more subtle shape. always having a gentle curve to your line. Taking off and landing. So we'll turn it back around. And if you want, depending on what yours looks like down here, you can Add one more at the bottom. So we have this very free form floating object with a fanciful grid on the inside. And now we're going to fill all of our grid spaces. So I think the way we'll tackle this is we'll turn your tile on its side. And I'm going to work in all of these center spaces. I'll start right in the middle and it'll make sense as we go. So working towards the center 
from this line, I'm going to draw a line straight down the middle. And I'm going to give this line a heavy weight at the bottom on both sides. And from the same point, I'm going to go to the right like this. And then I'm just going to weight the right side of the line now. Just the right side. And then I'll go to the left. Always starting from the same point. And you'll see quickly that you have to adapt to quite an unusual shape. But you just keep going. We've noticed this fragment filler kind of popping up in a lot of our work here lately, and we've decided to call it peppering because it really resembles the tangled pepper, but it can fit into all kinds of unique spaces. So I'm going to travel up and down this middle and fill it with this peppering. If you find it easier to turn your tile because we're going to be always working towards the center. Pull towards the center. And on that first line, we're weighting both sides. And then to the right, I'm weighting just the right side of my line. I think right off the bat you can think of endless possibilities of filling in these funny spaces and imagine how your fragments might play with each other in here. Even with this one, sometimes the weighted sections line up and sometimes they don't and both have pretty neat effect. So we've filled in all the middles here and now we're going to fill in the triangular spaces that are left. And with the same rule where we're going to be pulling in to the center, so basically down to the corner and weighting the line. really uh, demanding a lot of this fragment because it's having to bend and morph into unusual line shapes. But I'm just following what's there before me. Don't have to really think about the shape. I love watching this tile morph and change as we go. A very unpredictable result. Working in a grid tangle is comforting because you really just set yourself on one mindset and go. This one is a little different in that the shape is not consistent. Now this one is kind of odd, but I'm still going to pull towards the center best I can. So 
So now we have our teardrop shapes left. And we will do the same. We will divide those teardrops in half, pulling towards the center and waiting on both sides. Then to the right. It is kind of fun when they line up perfectly with their neighbor here. Anybody looking at this tile, I would challenge them to even imagine how we even began. That's a silly sort of framework we laid down. Wow. So that is super fun, as is. I love it. And so you have quite a bit of ink going on here. So I may just want to give it a few minutes to sink in before we start layering some other fun things on top. So I thought it would be fun to play around with this floral sort of negative space that happened after we filled in with our fragment. I'm just going to add a little detail with the um, beautiful blue Micron 01 that you got in your pack. And ever so slightly, I'm just going to add a little, a little bit of color, very light touch on my pen. Just adding an element, a hint of another color. And I'm pulling towards myself, but whatever is comfortable for you. And now we're going to get into working with these really great chalk pencils, the white chalk, which you might be familiar with already, and this pale blue chalk, and also a graphite pencil. So I'm going to start with the lightest color, white, and I'm going to highlight the tips of all of these petals. Sometimes if you have a brand new tip, you might kind of smush that off, but you're going to want to put some good pressure on it, really work that chalk into the paper. Working my way around the tile. As part of this whole layering of ink and chalk and graphite, leave yourself open to going back and repeating a step. If you feel you need a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that, that's sort of, that's the, that's the juice at the end the real fun part of sculpting your tile. Feel free to break and sharpen your tip as needed. Sometimes I enjoy a, a duller tip. I feel like I can push a little harder. I recommend using this General's sharpener uh, specifically with the charcoal pencil 
both this white one and the blue one. Um, they're really made exactly for these pencils. Now I'm going to take this beautiful blue pencil, and it's a long pencil, and so I've, in order to work with it on its side, I'm kind of taking a different approach to holding it, um, but you'll find what's comfortable for you. And I'm going to fill in the, the middle of these petals. And you can actually bring it down to the core here because we're going to cover that with graphite and the graphite being darker will go over that just fine. And you'll see how beautifully everything blends together. It's such a wonderful combination of colors. Subtle but soft and reminiscent of clouds or the tide rolling in. I'm even going over the white just a little bit and starting to blend right with the pencil. Those little hash marks just sort of nestled underneath giving a little bit of dimension to these accidental petals that we've created by leaving that space behind. And now I'm gonna grab my graphite pencil and just sort of, oh, that's a new tip. I'm going to soften that up a bit. So working on my side, side of my pencil here, I'm going to put in a little graphite. I'm going to show you one of these. You have three tortillons in your project pack, and if at all possible, you can try to sort of leave one for each one of your pencils. So that's what I'm going to be doing on each one. It doesn't take a whole lot there. It's already a darkened space because you've restated that line or point several times through this process. But adding the graphite over the blue gives you almost a, a third tone to complement our tile. Noticing now that the white tips that we put on first are appearing brighter in response to these new hues. Always remembering you can go back and add more blue or more white. Now you'll notice that I didn't didn't use a tortillon on the white, and I don't know if I need to. I may fill in a few spaces that I can see now that I might have missed. I like the strength of the white that's there. And it's pretty steady. You saw me just wipe it off with my finger and 
everything stayed put, which is pretty great. Now, isn't that so beautiful? I think I may just add a simple aura line to redefine around the edges, but you can leave yours as is if you prefer. And I'm using this lighter blue 01 micron. Because I can, because I have it. And I'm going ever so carefully and deliberately. Minding my aura space. So, because this is the 12 days of Zentangle, and it is a holiday time of year, um, I find that it would be just fun to add one more little festive touch to this. And with my gold jelly roll, I'm just going to highlight the center of each one of these beautiful flowers. This gold just rolls right out of the pen. It's luscious, beautiful. So as is, we can be finished, or if you wanted to, I don't know, figure out a way to top this off, um, you could add just a little ring at the top. And maybe envision how we might, how this might hang. So this beautiful ornament, I think, maybe deserves one last embellishment. And we'll be bringing it back to that original curvy shape, those loop-de-loops. And we're going to loop-de-loop -loop our way around the aura. almost like a string of lights. Just the lightest touch on your pen is all you need. Maybe just filling in those few spaces. There. I suppose we can, one last element. There. Our very first zing splat together. I love it. I had a few others that I had done. 
that I just thought would be fun to show you quickly using the same exact string but filling it in in sort of an enzeppled way and let's see here's another one a little simpler well I'm very excited to see what everybody does Hopefully you'll share on the app and show us all that you've done. Thanks so much.